Now, once a state has been allocated representatives, the state then has to decide how to divide up the population of the state uh, among those representatives. So now, rather than s taking like each county of the state and allocating it a number of representatives, now we're talking about U.S. Con congressional representatives here, uh, usually they create legislative districts. So this is a geographic area um, that is represented by a representative. And the goal is to have the, um, you know, each district contain uh, a, about the same number of people. So if you have uh, a million people in a state and you have 10 representatives, then each representative should be representing about 100,000 people. So in a s large city, uh, the representative might represent only a portion of the city or just the city, whereas in a more rural area, the representative may represent a much larger area. Now, to, div to create those, those uh, dividing lines, uh, the, the, that is a process called redistricting, and that happens every time there's a census, then they need to redraw the districts uh, in order to maintain equal size districts. Uh, and d when this process happens, uh, it, uh, it can sometimes lead to what's called gerrymandering. Uh, and this is when districts are based, uh, are drawn based on political affiliations, um, of the constituents to the advantage of those trying to draw the boundaries. Uh, so for example, consider that we had an er, uh, a, a state here, or small area with three districts. Um, we got a college here which tends to vote primarily Democratic, a rural area that tends to vote more Republican, uh, and the rest of the people are fairly split. Uh, and so right now, this middle district has been voting about 50-50 Democratic and Republican. So now suppose that we were redistricting, then uh, if it was a democratically led redistricting committee, they might decide, well, let's redraw these districts here. I'm going to redraw this district like this, and I'm going to redraw this district like this. Basically, what they're saying is, we've given up on this rural area, so we're just going to make it even more Republican, but by adjusting the boundaries, They've now made this region a little bit less of, uh, you know, having a little less of the Republican, um, boundary, and now even more, uh, they'd be a little bit more likely to win this county. Now, this can happen even in, um, even in bipartisan districting committees, uh, because, uh, you know, people who are elected like to stay elected. And so if there was a contentious region, let's say, let's say this rural area district over here was, um, you know, maybe we had these two districts and both of these were a little bit, uh, you know, middle of the road-ish, uh, they, they might collude and the, the, I mean, even a bipartisan committee might decide to redraw the districts like this thereby essentially ensuring that the Democrats will win one of the districts, the Republicans will win another one of the districts, and only one of the three districts is at all contentious. Now, this actually happens. Let me show you a couple examples. Uh, the first is the 38th district out of uh, California. Now, this district was created by a bipartisan committee of incumbent legislators. Um, so it's very likely that this district was drawn so that whoever was already uh, in office will be able to stay in office uh, by sort of reaff reaffirming their, 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 uh, their win. Uh, so here's another one. This is the 4th Congressional District in Illinois um, in 2004. Now you'll notice that there's two areas here that are only connected by, like, the freeway here. Uh, it turns out that these two areas contain the two predominantly Hispanic areas of Chicago, uh, Puerto Rican to the north and uh, Mexican primarily in the southern region. Uh, and so this district was drawn uh, to encompass all the uh, Hispanic voters uh, in, in, in the area.